All right, uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Deepti and I'm a product manager at Google. And today I'll be talking about how to transition to product management. And uh, before uh, I jump into the actual agenda, let me give you a quick overview of my own journey into product management. So I started my career as a software engineer after pursuing uh, engineering in computer science. Uh, and I really enjoyed solving complex problems as an engineer. But I also wanted to develop business acumen. Uh, so I pursued MBA. And after my MBA, I worked in a consulting firm uh, for a bit before joining Google. And at Google, I joined the product support team, uh, where I was working very closely with the product teams. And after a few years of working in support, I developed a strong inclination to move into product management. And because I was working so closely with the product teams, I was able to establish strong relationships with them. And as a result, one of the lead PM offered me a part-time product management opportunity. And I really enjoyed uh, working as a product manager. So that further uh, solidified my conviction to move into product management. And then, of course, I prepared for the interviews and eventually landed into a product manager role. All right. Uh, before I jump into the actual agenda, I also want to put a disclaimer that whatever I'm sharing today is all based on my own personal views and are not reflective of any of the organizations that have worked in the past or I'm working in present. All right. So. Um, while we are talking about transitioning into product management, it's very important to understand and answer this question of why product management, right? Why do you want to move into product management and are you the right fit for this role? So, um, and then I will also uh, talk about imposter syndrome, which is so very common and uh, more so in those who are aspiring to be a product manager. So I'll talk about some of the strategies uh, on how you can fight this imposter syndrome. And then uh, we'll look at how you can develop the relevant skills and experience that you need uh, for easy transition to product management. And then finally, I'll share some tips and strategies on how you can ace your interviews. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them, and I'll be happy to answer those at the end of the session. All right, uh, so let's jump into the first topic. Why a PM and am I the right fit for PM? Right? So it's very important to have the clarity on why you want to be a product manager and also identify if you are the right fit for this role, right? First and foremost, you need to answer what is your primary motivation to move into a product manager role? Is it because it's a very much sought after role and you have heard that they get to they get paid very highly. They have uh, their product managers like the CEO of the product, so they get to make all the decisions. They get to lead and manage the teams. If it is because of any of these reasons, then you are in for a big surprise. Yes, a product manager has to do a lot of grunt work. It's not that fancy that you may have thought about. So uh, definitely, you should reconsider your decision if it is because of any of these three reasons. But if you genuinely love building products, if you love understanding customers' pain points, identifying ways to improve customer experience, and you love collaborating with various cross-functional teams to build amazing products, then definitely this is the right next step in your career. Now, uh, we need to understand what are the key skills that are needed for a product manager. So if you look at the diagram on the right side, there are four key skills that are crucial for a product manager. The first is the strategic thinking. As a product manager, most of the times you will be developing the vision and strategy for the product area that you are tackling. So very, very important for a PM to have strategic thinking. And the second is the business acumen. Are you able to identify the right problems to solve, the right metrics to measure the success, and come up with ideas or the roadmap that can help create impact on the business as well as the end users? 
So that's what the business thinking is all about. And then the tactical is more on, uh, are you able to collaborate with other teams to actually execute whatever roadmap you have put together? As a PM, you will not have people reporting into you. So influencing without authority is very, very critical for a PM. So you need to see if you are comfortable with that. If you are not, then you need to figure out ways to develop that skill. And then the last is the technical. As a product manager, you will be working very closely with engineers. So you need to have fun foundational understanding of the technical, key technical concepts, uh, especially around how the systems are designed, uh, more around the distributed systems and at scale, like what are the constraints, what are the trade-offs that you need to consider. So um, it's very, very crucial for a PM to have good technical skills so that they are able to earn the trust and credibility of engineers. All right, so now we have understood what are the skills that are needed. Next step is to do your self-assessment and identify what are the areas that you are strong in and what are your weaknesses, right? And for the areas that are your strong areas, probably those are your transferable skills, right? So that is great. But areas where you are not that strong in, you will need to see how you can develop uh, the right kind of, uh, uh, how you can develop those skills through the, relevant experience. And I'll touch upon that in another slide. But uh, another important thing is you don't necessarily need to be strong in all these areas. As long as you are good, uh, I think like you are strong in two areas and good in other, um, one of the other two areas, you should be okay. All right, so next, um, what is imposter syndrome? It is a feeling that I do not belong to this community. Doubting, am I really the right fit for this role, right? And it's important to know that you are not the only one feeling this. Almost everyone goes through this. In fact, the stats show that 40% of the product managers experience imposter syndrome frequently or all the time. And only 8% of the product people said that they never experienced it. So yes, it is a real thing. But how can we fight it? First and foremost is that you need to believe in yourself. You should, once you have decided you want to move into PM role, then you need to have full faith in your abilities, have 100% confidence that you will do it, right? And then of course, it's easier said than done. Uh, there are some techniques that can help you develop that confidence and sustain that. So first is practice. Doing, as the famous saying goes, right? Practice makes perfect. So the more you practice, the better you will get at it. And practice again includes doing practice by yourself or practicing with others. But essentially, you need to develop that product thinking muscle, right? And that's where practice helps you develop that. And then um, the other thing you could consider is joining some spiritual or motivational groups. I have been practicing Buddhist philosophy as a member of SGI, and I have found it very, very useful in various aspects of my life. So you can definitely check it out. I've added the link to it. And uh, lately, I also started following Sadhguru. Uh, they have a lot of uh, great content, free content on their YouTube channel and an app as well. So you definitely can check that out as well. Um, so I think the ultimate goal here is that you need to stay positive and, uh, and continue to persevere, no matter how many ups and downs you encounter during the journey. Right, so see whatever works the best for you. These are some things that work for me. All right, so next, um, now that you have uh, evaluated your fitment to the PM role and you have decided to pursue the path to becoming a PM, then the next step is to develop the relevant skills and experience. So how do we do that? Uh, first is leverage your network. You can reach out to people on LinkedIn, reach out to PMs, PM managers in your organization or other organizations that you've worked in the past. 
you can also reach out to alumni from your university who are already into the product management. So again, reaching out to as many people as you can and see if they have any part-time PM role that you can support in. Most of the times, product managers are really swamped with work. So they are looking for people who can help them. So that could be one way to look for getting relevant experience. Other option could be building your own products. Could be as simple as building a blog or your own YouTube channel, right? So, um, or you could consider doing other freelance projects. So the, those are different ways to develop the, the skills that we looked at earlier, which are crucial for a PM. All right. So now comes the next step of facing the interviews. The interviews play a very, very big role in determining the success or failure of your transition into product management. So very important to ace the interviews. But before we talk about how to prepare the, for the interviews, I want to first talk about how do you, what is being evaluated in the interviews. So in terms of the key skills that are being evaluated, there are four key skills, like I mentioned earlier. The first is the product sense. What is product sense? It is also called product intuition or product judgment. It is your ability to understand what makes a product great. Right? Are you able to identify the key user insights and then come up with ways to transform the user experience? Right. So that's what product sense is all about. And some of the questions that you may get asked as part of product sense are improve a product. Could be improve Google Photos. Or it could be design a new product. Design a smart shoe is an example. Or it could be design a product for a specific type of persona. For example, design Google Maps for blind. Or it could be what is your favorite product? or what is your the product that you hate the most, most right and these questions are very very common favorite and uh, hated product so it is advisable to prepare these questions think about the products uh, across different categories like favorite tech product favorite non-tech product and favorite uh, product uh, favorite app or things like that so that's very very um, that's going to help you and then next is the product analytical uh, and execution ability. So uh, here they are evaluating on whether you can identify the key metrics to measure the success for the given product. And are you able to crunch numbers? So you may get asked questions like estimate the market size. Again, as a product manager, you will be looking at a lot of data. So they are they are trying to see if you are able to analyze the data and come up with good insights based on the data. So that's why they ask these kind of questions. Um, there could be a question around what should be the pricing strategy for a product. So again, these are all under analytical ability. And then the third is the product strategy. Now, what is product strategy? It's all about big picture thinking. Are you able to identify what you need to do and what we should not do? What will be your differentiating strategy? to differentiate your product from the competitors? And how will you respond to a competitive threat? So those are all under product strategy. And then technical skills uh, is all about evaluating whether you have the fundamental understanding of the how systems are designed, what happens under the hood. So there could be questions on system design, um, question like design Instagram or what happens when you search on Google. Explain what happens under the hood when you search on Google. So those are like some system design questions that you may get asked. And other could be uh, algorithm design. So again, you are not expected to code, but you are expected to know about the algorithms, how, how the algorithms are designed and how they work. So those are some of the questions you may get asked for technical evaluation. And uh, another important thing is that you, in one interview, you may get evaluated across different skills. So it's not that in 
it's only product if it is if the recruiter has told you it's a product sense interview they may still evaluate you on some of the other skills that you see here so very important to have open mind when you go for the interview all right so now we have looked at what is being evaluated now let us see how do we prepare for the interviews so i opted for the three pronged strategy for interviews um first is developing a strong foundation what do i mean by strong foundation uh, basically having a very good understanding of what a product manager does on a day to day basis and what are the different types of problems that they have to solve and what are the different types of frameworks that could be helpful in tackling those problems so um, what helped me in developing that foundation was uh, the books such as cracking the pm interview decode and conquer i think they cover the basics pretty well and then you could also consider uh, some of the courses such as try exponent or product alliance um and um, another thing which is very important uh for a product manager is to stay up to date with the latest tech trends so um some of the resources that helped me with that was a16z they have they're pretty good at um you know what's happening latest in tech and then medium has a lot of great content you can definitely subscribe to that uh, and strategy is very good when it comes to strategic thinking um product hunt has product hunt vergecast again they have also great content with the latest tech trends uh, and then uh, webinars uh, for school has a great collection of webinars by experienced pms so all these resources were very helpful uh, with building the foundation after you have gone through all this then comes the next step of doing the practice so for practice uh, it's both practice by yourself and practicing with others practicing by yourself you could look at products around you and think of think of how you can take this product to the next level so that could be one example or you could act as an interviewer and interview yourself and then see how you can how you're doing right so that's the all about self practice and then practicing with others there is a slack channel by louis lane where a lot of uh, product managers share their availability and offer to do mocks with each other so that was a great uh, resource for finding peers to do mocks and then try exponent also has a platform for finding the peers for mock interviews and uh, of course you can also reach out to experienced pms either through linkedin or in your organization to do mocks with them so um, again if i were to look at the allocation of your time uh, across these three buckets that i mentioned i would say 20 to 30% would be in strong foundation but 50% of the time at least that's what i did uh, 50% was spent in practicing so practice really plays a huge role but just doing mocks will not help until you uh, unless you actually review the feedback and figure out uh improvement areas for yourself and revise your frameworks if needed so i think this is the full loop that you need to go through and you continue doing that until you reach a point where at least 80% of your mocks you are getting fairly good feedback so that is a pretty good signal that you are ready to go for the actual interviews all right so finally i also want to share some practical tips for interviews based on my experience uh first is to never jump to answer the question very important to take time to organize your thoughts structure your thoughts and then answer the question i cannot tell you how many times i made this blunder and it every time i did that it backfired so important to structure very very uh, be very organized and uh, structured when you are answering the questions and then um, second uh, tip is uh, very important to tie back your solutions to the goal that you had proposed to begin with and if and also state the goal very clearly and third be very crisp and concise there's a thumb rule of 3 so see if you can follow that like follow the you know everything you are saying like bullets points uh, keep it in bullet points of 3 that helps you stay organized and be crisp and uh, another thing is 
when you, especially in the product sense questions see if you can take the experience to plus and plus plus level what i what do i mean by that is not just thinking incrementally but thinking more big picture moonshot ideas that can really transform the experience for a particular problem that you're tackling and uh, another thing is very important to state your assumptions and explain the rationale for those assumptions especially when you're doing estimation questions and the last thing is when you are doing prioritization very important to state your criteria clearly and evaluate each option before you pick one so yeah those are all my uh, tips and uh, i've also listed some resources that were helpful during my preparation journey feel free to check them out uh, if you have any questions post them happy to help any way i can i know it is not an easy journey but believe me if you are committed to making it happen you will do it so wishing you all um, all the best and i hope you found the session useful thank you so much